One of the biggest mistakes we make in our marketing is trying to get people to be ready to work with us instead of talking to people who already know that they are ready to work with someone just like us. While there's a time and place for education and opening people up to new ideas and opportunity, as a small business, we need to be focused and clear on our ideal client and focus on them because we're not trying to talk to everybody. We're just talking to those small number of people that are right to buy from us. He wastes so much time and energy on the old bits and pieces. Now, we're looking at 25 beliefs that your ideal client or customer could or should feel to be ready to buy for you. This is a not an exhaustive list, so you might have other ones. And I have focused on service-based businesses. So if you are a e-commerce business or you sell products, then you might find that there are other ones. For example, if you sell picture books, you might have a self-belief uh, that the person may already have that literacy is really, really important to us. And so we're not going to try and convince people that people need to buy get picture books, but that's an existing belief they already have. We just can make an assumption that people have that. So what I recommend you do is to go through and select three that you can focus on over and over again in your marketing. My name is Rachel Claver and I'm the host of Confident Content. I'm a content marketing strategist and I'm a coach to people who want to work on their marketing and help them be a face of the business. And I'm all about helping you in your business grow more proactively, more thoughtfully and more targeted in your marketing to make it work better for you. When we create content that assumes that people already believe these beliefs that they've got, we're going to naturally attract people that are ready to buy from us. And that's what I want us to do. We don't want to have to spend our limited budget of time and energy and even money focusing on trying to go too broad when if we stay narrow, people will find us. The algorithms are designed to help us find those people. So all you've got to do is listen to the 25. Go through, make a bit of a short list, then really refine it down to three. Choose them, then decide what sort of content is going to show you're going to meet that need. We'll, we'll talk about that a little bit in here. And how you're going to share that content, like where you're going to share it. And then we're away. It's that simple. So let's get started. All right. So we're going to talk about these 24, 25 core beliefs. Now, these are important to us because these can help talk about the way that we set our tone for our business. They can set the sort of content that we have. They can set our social proof. So for example, if someone has a belief in being able to achieve goals, if they're a real goal setter and they believe that goals are really important to them, then we would talk about how our clients meet their goals and how we help them do that, for example. And they might want to be in investing in things that help them do that. So we need to show them that that's part of what we do. So we've got 25, we're going to whip through them. They are in no particular order, okay? So every business owner is going to have a slightly different combination and they all are going to be dependent on what you believe is important. Uh, so for example, let's just take another one. Um, a belief in um, health and well-being and that health and well-being are top priority. You might have that as a target market focus if you are a um, osteopath. You may also have it if you are a nutritionist and you may also have it potentially if you're a life coach, if that's a particular niche for you. So they're not necessarily about being in a particular industry. They're really about what you are and who you're talking to directly. And they should align with what you are confident that you can deliver for those people at the same time. Okay, let's get started with this. So the first one that I'm going to pick out of my list of 25 as a belief in their personal self-worth. So these are for people who have a really good understanding of what they are worth and that they deserve the very best. That means that they are looking for a service that is going to be considered high value, the best service and high quality, and they're not going to settle for less. This is not going to be your target market if you are super cheap. You can't say you're super cheap and amazing in the same sentences because no one actually believes that. Even if it's true, no one believes that. So this is not going to be one for you. These are for people who that are like, I value myself, so I am going to buy the very best money I can buy. I was talking to someone last week. She's talking about working with one hour with a coach that she really expect, um, really, really wants to work with. They are $1,000 US an hour, and she is prepared to pay it because she wants to have that time with that person. For someone else, it might be their cap might be 500 or 300 or whatever but they know that they deserve the best service. So that might be one. So they've got a strong belief in their personal self-worth 
and they feel good about spending to invest in that. Um, it could be like that for products too. You could have high-end products, any high-end service. You have to just assume people already know they deserve to pay for it because they deserve it for themselves. The second one is a belief in their own goals, that they've got these goals that are worth attend, attending to. They know they need to have help with some support, but they also know that they have goals that are worth going for. So they are self-fulfilled. They've got going places. I know that this is one of the things that I have as one of the areas I'm really focusing on more talking to because I know that while I can help people set their goals, if they don't have a belief in those goals, it's very hard to get them to make the uncomfortable changes they need to make with their content. So this is one that I very much want to look at. I'm also not very motivated by people who are not driven and I'm having to kind of push them along. But I lose interest with those people really, really fast. I want big goal people who really believe they can get there. And yes, I can help people make those goals. I do that with my strategy, but with coaching, I really need them to have a real belief that they can do it. Uh, the third one is a belief in the value of expertise. So this is a little bit like self-worth, but it's slightly different, that they really believe that they need to have experts around them to guide them and help them. So there's just an assumption that that is going to be something that they know they need. And so you can show up and show how you can be that person. So you can talk about the value of your expertise. You can talk about what you already are doing and how what, what made you an expert and what, what, what has made you stand as a leader in what you do. There's activity that you can do in your marketing that shows that influence that you've got. And those people are going to be more attracted to that because they value the expert voice in the marketplace. They might have a belief in the need for personal growth. They are open to learning and growth. Um, I definitely have a couple of these in my, my coaching group where I've worked with people like this who are basically knowing that they just need to go through. I've got a couple that I've work, worked with this year in terms of one-on-one -on -one strategies that are the same. Who Marketing wasn't necessarily a high need for them, but they had a really strong need to grow and learn in all areas of their business. And marketing was one of those things that they did that with. So you might have people who go, I just want to have a personal development space or a business space in there to invest in myself, which is actually another one that we can talk about in a minute. So they're open to learning and growth and they are open to developing themselves. Again, that's something that's really important to me. It's not one of my top three, but that's something that's really important to me as a coach to see that in people. The next one is a belief in collaboration. This works really well for service-based providers who are doing some of the work. So for things like I can achieve more with the right team, that would be what they would say. And so they're actively knowing that if they go and seek out professionals that help them, this is going to really help them deliver. Uh, we want to have people that um, when we're talking to that and we're talking about how to talk to those people, we talk about the, the power of collaboration. Sorry, my microphone just readjusted itself. Um, so the power of collaboration with your service base business, like looking at how you work together best with them and how you uh, listen to their ideas and you take them on board. And that's part of that journey. So it's not a, we're doing it my way or the highway. That collaboration might be an important part for you. And if it's an important part for your customer, you need to talk to that. There might be a belief in investing in themselves. It's a little bit like personal growth, but that investing in themselves is the best investment for their business that they can make. So really talking about what areas of self-improvement is happening in the group business dynamic that you're providing or the services you're, you're providing. That's very much a coaching version or a strategic version or, rather than a done-for-you consulting offer if we're in the service-based businesses. Um, another one, which is probably not one that I'm a fan of, <laughs> um, but although I do cater to this, is um, people who have a strong belief in their unique needs. So there are definitely people out there that you could talk to who go, you know, my needs are unique and my service that I'm going to get is custom made and tailored for me. Now, we all should be, you know, if we say there's a bespoke program or there's this thing created for us, there is definitely a target market that has that. One thing I would say is you need to make sure if you're offering that offer that it is matched with a value of expertise or a value of self-worth of the best service. Because otherwise, you might be doing bespoke work, but paid at a low level. The lower the pay, the more general it has to be, the more structured it has to be, the less customized it is. Otherwise, you are losing out as a service provider. But your target market, if you've got a high-end product, 
you can definitely meet to those unique needs. And it might be that you have an offering that does that. So for example, my one-on-one offering, we have two sessions that are pretty much the same for everybody. And then the last four are very much bespoke to what that client needs and is directed to what their needs, which I guess is, is part of that. Um, you might have, they might have a strong belief in taking action. This is one of the number one for me. So proactive and pursuing what you want. I am not a coach who wants to push people to take action. I get very demotivated if I'm having to remind people to take action over and over again. I want people who are self-determining. I can definitely help structure. I can definitely help push where there's a block. I can definitely help those things. But people that aren't prepared to set the time aside and to make the time, I lose motivation with that. Um, that's not me as a coach. That is other people who love coaching people that are not like that. But you need to think, do I want to be someone who is already an action taker, who is already ready to engage with you and is prepared to take the actions required to make changes? Is that a key thing that a person that you're talking to? So I've been actively talking more to those people this year and that's definitely changed the type of people that I'm getting. Another one might be having a belief that they it is possible for them to create a better future, either for themselves, for people around them, for their business, for their family. And this belief has a strong level of optimism and a desire for services that also help contribute to a better future. So they might want to have more impact-led type businesses. They want to see your ethos and whether you're building towards something as well. So that can be a belief that you might want to talk to that really reflects your brand. They might have a belief in overcoming challenges, that they can overcome obstacles with the right amount of guidance, that they can push through and they can fight, get past things. Um, that is not another one that probably be quite strong for me. I'm a real believer in we all have challenges, we all have obstacles. Let's just find the solution that's going to help us resolve that, right? So that would be another one that I would want to talk to. I, I've got a few in here that, quite a lot in here that I would drill down. Um, but that's a really good one. So finding out, like, do you want to have people who, you know, are recognized that there are challenges, but are really proactive, able to find things that, that will solve that problem for them? And, and are you that person? There might be people um, who have a strong belief in that they are essentially different. They have a unique value that is different than other people's. This is similar to the looking for, um, you know, saying that they stand out and that they um, have unique needs. But this is more about their value that they bring something special to the table, that they have something that's different. This belief can help them seek services that help them leverage their unique qualities. That is probably one of my core ones um, because I really am looking for people who have a, who want to develop a unique voice. They might not know how to recognize it yet, but they know that they have something special to say and deliver in their industry. Um, if I look at everything that I do, that probably is number one for me and is one of the most important ones that I find is necessary for me to really focus on because it's very hard to become the face of your business if you don't believe that you have unique value and is diff and different from everybody else. Um, so that's one of my core beliefs that we all have unique value and I believe that my clients need to have it too because otherwise we're going to really struggle um, in terms of finding that, that reliance and we're going to have to puff them up a lot and for help them forget they won't if they can't, don't have a spark of that, it's going to make it really tricky. Um, belief in long-term relationships. Um, some people really want to build a long-term relationship with their client, um, with their, their partners in terms of providers like coaches or early child, uh, childhood, coaches or social media people. I used to look at early childhood. I don't know when they came out. Um, but they might want to have long-term relationships and that that's part of the essential part of path to success. success. So they're looking for someone that they can partner with over a period of time. So they'll want to have something that's ongoing. It's not a short-term course. They're looking for a long-term relationship with that person. And they're looking for trying to find people that are engaged with them and having time. That's one of the things that um, I know that people have said to me and reflected as they really like with the coaching. It's longer as opposed to the one-on-one, -on -one, which is like a six, eight year period. And that's sometimes their deciding factor because they know they want to have that. So thinking about, you know, if you've got a longer program, you can talk to that and attract people in who want to have that longer program. If it's shorter, it's not necessarily the right fit for those people, so we would ignore those ones. Uh, believe in continuous improvement. Uh, Rod would say that this is probably the one that we must have, always have. But people who believe that you can always find room for improvement and room to refine your skills is definitely one that might fit many of us. 
So it might be that it's not expected that things would be perfect the whole way through, but it will be things that would help them to keep them engaged with you, that we're always going to the next level, we're always coming to the next stage. Again, that would be one of my absolute cores for me because I'm really a big believer and we're all on a continuum and everyone's in a different place. And so it's always about finding where you are and then taking one step towards improvement as opposed to feeling like tomorrow you're going to suddenly make it. So that would be definitely one that I would have. Um, a belief in taking calculated risks. I'm willing to take calculated risks for growth. Now, this is one I don't really strongly feel that I want to do. I don't want my clients to feel like working with me is a risk, but there are definitely other people who would choose this as one of theirs because it would fit really well with what they're doing. I'm on balance, gone, yep, I'm ready to make that jump. I'm not too sure whether I should do it or not, but I'm going to take the risk that this is going to be the thing that pays off. That could be one that you want to attract. Um, a belief in their own happiness, so wanting to have happiness as a priority, that's, again, not going to be one of mine. Not that I don't want my clients to be happy, but uh, people who want to have that overall well-being and that sense of just feeling like they're going to feel like they belong, they're connected, they are doing something that's for their own personal development, that's making them feel better inside, and that might be one of the ones that you would use. A belief in the need for trust and integrity in the people that they work with so that I trust that this business is going to act with integrity. That's the belief that they've got. And so you need to think about how that would be, you know, is that, and that would probably be, again, like it's really hard to pick for me, the top three. Like I know that unique value and continuous improvement would probably be in my top three. But there are elements, obviously, that we want to actually have, but we might not target. So how can you show that you are full of integrity, that you've got trust? Obviously, there's things that we can do across the board, but this might be a central one that you really need to do particularly if you're in an industry where there's a lot of mistrust, um, it's really important to have this one. A belief in flexibility and adaptability. The ability that they can adapt to changing circumstances, that they can change if the winds change, they can move and adapt and pivot. Now that's, a, that's actually a belief I have, but I don't require my customers to have that one. I can help adapt and help them get there, but I don't need them to have it. Um, and this is that sort of thing too, where that is a core belief for me in terms of what I believe I should have as a business owner that I can model to my customers, but they don't need it with me before they work with me. So that is not one that I know they need to have to choose to work with me. That's something we can teach. Um, a belief in time management. I value my time and I want efficient services. I want things to be done on the time they're going to land. I need to have things there. That's a really important one, like thinking about, is it going to be something that respects the time of the client? Is it got things that's structured that's going to help them work out what to do? Is everything feel efficient? Do things run on time? Do things get delivered when they say they're going to? That might be a thing that you could talk to. I know that there's people, engineers and others who, where there's a history of people not delivering on time, this is a strong one that they can talk to. We, we turn up on time. I know of a, a plumbing company in, in Australia that, one of their things was we turn up on time because service-based businesses, tradies often just go, oh, we'll turn up at seven and they're not there. So turning up on time, it could be a really important one that you could talk to. As a busy business owner, knowing that my people that I'm employing as service-based people are going to turn up on time, that's one I would look for. I don't necessarily need to teach that, have my clients look for that with me, even though I think I deliver that. It's not a cool one for me, but it's one I definitely would look for in a, um, a service provider. Um, a belief in community and so support and social impact. So wanting to support businesses that give back to the community. So some people will have businesses that they know that it's giving a social impact or making a positive impact in a brighter way. So there might be an environmentally aware, sustainability, um, give back in terms of like charitable giving or things like that might be in that space. Again, not one of mine, but definitely something I look for in other organizations when I'm choosing. So this is starting to show you too, there's things that we can have that we would look for for different areas that would make skew our decisions that we may not necessarily have to be showing in our own offer because it doesn't fit with the offer we have or the way that attracts our best clients. Um, another one would be financial wellness. I'm wanting to invest in my financial well-being. So people that do pricing and budgeting, accountants, that definitely would be one there. People are doing investments, so it's financial planning, wealth management, investment. They are people that would be looking at people who already believe that it's important to secure their financial future, not trying to change minds of people or get them to change what they're doing, but really starting from that place of belief. Um, a belief in creativity or innovation. 
valuing creative solutions and innovative ideas. Uh, these are people that they are pushing past the boundaries. They're wanting things that are different from the norm, pushing past the boundaries, the little bit of weird factor, all those things that make things different and embracing new ideas might be the thing that you're showing your people of how to do. Now, I have a lot of creativity and innovation, but I've learned that that's not necessarily something that I want to be showing I can provide to clients because often we have to focus on the base stuff. I show my creativity and innovation in my how-to post and my um, personality and those sort of things. So it tracks and sees, oh, there's those elements, but I wouldn't make that one of the driving things that I do. So it's nuance. So you don't have to have like, um, if you're talking about to, to, to three, say three core things, there can be other ways you can nuance some of the other ideas. It might be in your advertising and the way you write and talking and conversations, but it might not be the core thing that's attracting those people. I wouldn't want someone to feel that I'm going to have to make them innovate to be with me. They can do very basic stuff and still be trailblazers in the industry. So that's important. A belief in health and well-being. Um, this obviously is one that's really good for healthcare, fitness and wellness businesses, people that are prioritizing the health, that they already believe that health and well-being is a top priority. So we're not trying to convince them to have less sugar or have less carbs or have more carbs or have more sugar or whatever the thing is that you're doing, more exercise, exercise. It's just an accepted space of where you're sitting and talking to the people who already know that they need to have that is really important. Um, a belief in sustainability, so it's supporting businesses that are environmentally responsible. Uh, so it might be looking at sustainable, eco-friendly eco practices and resonating with people who already believe in protecting the environment. Again, we're not trying to change a view. We're just talking to people that are like that. Uh, but you could have a belief in collaboration across differences. So you know, I've got a couple of clients that work with neurodiverse people. They already got that belief of, I believe in diverse perspectives and collaboration across cultures or learning styles or whatever the thing is. And that the importance is that businesses that promote diversity and inclusion can target clients who value collaboration across differences. So we're already making an assumption that people are already aware that there's an importance of differences. And all we're doing is now sharing how we can help you do that and build on that. Um, and the last one is a belief in personal empowerment, believing that you've got the power to change your circumstances. I think out of the three, and that fits with continuous improvement for me, so I've got to kind of work through which one I like that most. Um, but I already have a belief that we can change our circumstances. And I don't know if I need my customers to think, clients to think that, but I definitely know I want to teach them that. Um, and I, but I am a big believer in people taking control of their lives and sometimes getting help to do that. Um, but they are, when we are trying to empower people to take control, to attract um, the ideal clients, for me, um, is really believing in that ability that you've got the power to do it inside yourself. So to me, that podcast is my number three. I might have to ditch continuous improvement and put that in there. All right, so there's 25. We wrapped through those quite a lot, but there's 25. You might have a different one, like belief in literacy or whatever. But what we need to do is think, Here's three core things we need our customers to, to believe about themselves that they, so for, let's just take, I'm just going to pull three out. So you could say that I believe in um, sustainability, I believe in personal empowerment, and I believe in my own happiness, for example. And then what you would do is if you've got those three, is you would need to think of a story, a client story, or a personal story that would help illustrate each one of those. You might have a demonstration of something that you do inside your practice or something that you do in your coaching program or your services to show how you can meet that belief that they've got, the need belief that they've got. You might have a tool or a download or a solution that they could use to help meet that. You might have a question you could ask that helps stimulate people around that. So these are all different types of posts that we could be doing around that. We could do something where we give, we give them some insight or support or we share a testimonial or a case study, which is kind of a story. Um, so you could do like any of those things will build influence that you are the right person for those people who need that. And then you need to think about where you're going to share that information. So let's just take, um, let's just take belief in personal empowerment, I have a power to change my circumstances. I could do a story about a client who um, chose to change their circumstances after working with me 
and um, what they did. So how they started with something and how they became more empowered in their own marketing because of it. I could tell my own story about how I did that. In fact, I do tell that story quite often about how once I decided that I was going to run my own events, what changed and how it, what impact it had on my business. Um, so that's attractive to people who are wanting to have that personal empowerment. I might do a demonstration of how you can move from one space to the other with a, I guess, a mantra or a self-belief tool that can help you do that. I have one that's, that I stole from my friend Deb Rowley, which is saying, you know, show me who loves me, which actually really helps you see the people around you and how it impacts the change. I might um, ask a question like, um, what, let's, let's come up with something on that. I, I'm, I'm riffing guys. So, you know, um, me, riff, me saying this stuff now is me pausing. So, so if, if their, their belief is I have the power to change my circumstances, my question might be who, who I could go right out and say, who believes they have the power to change them, their circumstances or um, who believes that life can be different to what it looks like today? Um, or who who knows that their life is changed because of activity, uh, positively changed because of activities they've done in the past. So there's questions I could ask that stimulate those sort of questions um, around that. Or I could have like a little cheat sheet or a checklist that I could de- give you a download that kind of builds that interaction. And all of those are going to attract my ideal client who have a belief that they can change their circumstances. Getting the picture? So when we start looking at how we can talk directly to what they believe in themselves, it can really help us build influence of them knowing that we're the right person to talk to in that space. Then we can put that content on our social medias, we can have lead generation, we can put it in our emails, and it's going to naturally attract the ideal client for us. I'd love to know what you think about this. Um, Confident content is all about helping you as a a provider in your own business to become more confident with your own marketing and understand content marketing and go a bit deeper than just the average, hey, you need to be, um, you know, posting three times a week and what well, I've done a thing on that, but that's more like what sort of post you need to do or, you know, you need to be on Instagram. I really want you to be thinking more deeply about the strategy behind what you're doing. So I'd love to know what you think. I would love it if you told me one of your, um, the core beliefs that your customers need to have. And I'd also love you to just let me know what you think about the podcast. Um, please do review me. Um, if you've enjoyed it, go to confidentcontentpodcast.com and you can review on there. That's my podcast page. Or you can review me on Spotify or Apple. Otherwise, you can come and be part of the Mid Marketing Group on Facebook and ask any questions from today and there. I'm very happy to answer them. I'm loving the emails and the comments that I'm getting so far. Thank you so much. And I've just started creating some new free content workshops around New Zealand for next year, 2024. I've got my last one in Invercargill on the 1st of November. Um, and I've, I'm doing one in Christchurch at the time recording in a couple of days, but that will have already been gone. Um, and and then there'll be some other ones all through New Zealand um, next year. So keep an eye out for those. Uh, you can just register on Eventbrite. Just follow my page so that when new events come up, you know that this one in your area And if you've got a particular area you'd love me to visit in 2024 to come and deliver my free content strategy workshop, flick me an email on rachelinidentifymarketing.co.nz and I will put it on the list of possibles or tell you that it's already there. Right, have a great week. And next week we are listening to one of my clients, Renee, talk about um, her space and why she's not getting as many conversions from her content and what she has to do to change with a live coaching session thoroughly love doing it and I hope you enjoy listening to it and learning with her. Have a great week.